since I've been like remote teaching, I haven't done this in a while. I actually made a PowerPoint so I can kind of feel normal or in a routine. So I'll try and share that with you. There you go. Share. And let's start. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> There we go. Okay, I hope everybody sees that. Yes. Uh, okay, good. I hope everyone can hear me. I'm trying to speak as loud as I can. Uh, microphone's in the back of the computer, so it's kind of hard. Uh, this week, why is interpretation of the Bible needed? And what principles should we use? Okay. Uh, that's just the title. Hey. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, what do we do with the scriptures? All right. We often talk about this. So I looked ahead through the rest of the lesson uh, for the quarter. So today we'll focus on why, not how, to interpret scripture. The rest of the quarter, if you look through the table of contents, it talks about the how. So we just really concentrate on why and We'll take a look at uh, not just why, we'll, we'll kind of limit ourselves to why. We won't go into how, so I want to kind of steer the conversation towards that, okay? And then we want to uh, look in context of what we studied, especially what we talked about the last couple of weeks, uh, namely the views of the Bible and the Bible itself, the using the scriptures as itself, okay? So let's go on. Uh, obviously, sometimes we need to interpret the Bible. We looked the uh, last recent quarters, Daniel and Revelation. This is actually one of our own Adventist publications. Uh, well, you take a look at the imagery, of course. You need to... You only have what? Huh? Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. We have uh, this imagery here. So. Yes, thank you. That was really good. Yeah. Pablo with your mom. Hello? Are you leaving on a camping trip, Allison? Oh, I'm hearing oh, everybody. Why am I muted? <laughs> oh, here we go. I, was, I said, are you leaving on a camping trip, Allison? Hey, I'm competing with you guys. Mother's Day. Hello? Hello? Fun, fun times. What did you, you say? All right, well, let's go on. Uh, our memory verse, someone like to read? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Hebrews 11.6, could uh, someone read that for us? Pablo, can you mute everybody except uh, Ty? We got a lot of background noise. Can everybody up? So, yeah, uh, I already told Andres with Hillary to tell him they're trying to tell him that he's talking in this chat as well. I think Adrian, the one is on. 
So Asia is away from her phone, but she's moving around. That's why I can't turn her off. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. Sorry. Not a problem. Well, if you can read that, um, that's here. <laughs> Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who seek him. Okay. So our Sabbath school author makes a point of this in uh, the introduction that you need to approach the scriptures with the faith that God exists. So as Christians, we don't, we don't ask the question, does God exist? We assume that he does. And we assume that the Bible is a message for us. And since this is a message for us, we need to be able to understand this correctly. And that is the main focus of why we're going to have to uh, interpret the Bible so that we get the correct understanding. So that after we have the correct understanding, we're able to go ahead and uh, use it. Okay, so let's start off with Sunday's lesson on presuppositions. And we have, what is a presupposition? Uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Basically a preconceived idea. Okay, thank you. Uh, right. It's important for us to recognize this. Our presuppositions affect our view of things, all kinds of things. The presuppositions come from basically our experiences and our, sometimes our education and uh, the way we interact with other people, okay? Um, there's this part that's straight out of our lesson. Bible study and theological reflection always happen against this backdrop. How we view God, right? So, are there... Let's have someone... Could someone read Isaiah 59.2 for us, please? Anybody has that? I'll give you some time to get to that. And if someone else can get ready and read Luke uh, 24, 25, and 26, we can do that. Asia, can you mute yourself, please? Uh, sorry, background. Thank you. Anybody? Isaiah 59.2 or? Isaiah 59.2, but your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Thank you. Um, a comment here was that our sinful nature kind of keeps us from truly understanding the word of God here. Uh, somebody else? Luke 24, 25 and 26? Okay. Can read that. Okay. Okay. Um, 25 and 26. Um, and he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Okay. Thank you. Um, when we look at those, we're looking at one was the prophecy of Isaiah that talks about us in general, our, our human state. The other is Jesus on the road to Emmaus talking about the talking to two of his followers. We, we know so much, but at the same time, we have this whatever it is keeping us from truly understanding that. Uh, and the question that we have here: Are there any? other outside influences that affect our interpretation of the Bible. Anyone? Um, 
I've, I, I want to mention this thing. The thing is, it's very, if someone, if a child embraces a Christian worldview, usually they end up under intense assault from their high school years and up because of their professors and the, uh, and their teachers who do not understand the concept of keeping an open mind. <clears throat> and usually they end up walking away from God because, well, a lot of reasons, actually. The most common one is intellectual skepticism. And, like, the basic thing is it, did, it didn't make sense for me, or I didn't understand it, or I think there's no proof like that. Okay, that's one. Uh, we we look again at uh, what we said earlier, education there. Now we have social pressures, okay? So when we look at that, we, we look at what we already bring when we, from our own personal backdrop into this idea. So one precaution we need to take a look at is let's just figure out what we should do with the Bible uh, brings me. Most of you know I educated in our school, our church school system from kindergarten all the way through university. Uh, always three things that we look at is: Do you take the Bible number one at face value, or number two, you you kind of ignore it like some people think, or number three, the thing we have to do is to interpret some of this and take a look and say well okay we need to uh, gain a better understanding by interpreting that and so our Sabbath school lesson here tells us we need to reaffirm that all of us with different backgrounds and experiences we have to come to this understanding of God which is why we interpret this okay and one promise that Jesus gives us in John 16, 13, which um, I'll just read since I have it marked. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. But he will speak on his own initiative. He will, I'm sorry, he will not speak on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. So one of the things we can do to help us with our presuppositions is to actually listen better. As we study, we listen and seek the will of God, and we listen for the impressions of the Holy Spirit there. Okay. Um, let's, somebody, okay. Let's go on to Monday's lesson. Oh, before we do that. When you think of the word duck, what do you think? Either duck down or the animal. Well, we have that. And we have this. Okay. So we have duck. Now, that brings up the problem that the author brings with us with translation and interpretation. We... Again, my presupposition, just bringing my own thing into this lesson, is I work, uh, I had to take linguistics classes. I believe that true language is spoken. Written is, is different. So we have problems reading the Bible. And that's part of the question here. Are key ideas lost in translation or because of language issues? Uh, Author points out, none of us really, I think maybe Pastor Ivan only and Pastor Pablo understand the ancient uh, coinage Greek that the Bible, especially the New Testament, is written in. I heard of, I think, one or two different types of currency. The only one I remember is the drachma. Uh, we're and not talking about that right now. We're talking about language. Okay. Uh, so we have here this nuance, just like we just did with the duck. And the duck is the language that keeps us from truly understanding. Um, is, there, is there a problem here? Like, or even in the translation in our combined church service, are there ideas that are lost in translation? And how do we over 
overcome that or why do we need to be aware of that? Uh, you know, the, the translator is hopefully trained in the, not just the language, but in the background knowledge of what the translator or the originator is, is speaking about. Um, uh, for example, it'd be very strange for me to try to talk to you about uh, a subject that I'm not an expert in. And so we have this here idea that the language is going to keep us from truly understanding the meaning here. So when we look at the need for translation, it's because the language is very different from our own modern language. Uh, someone made a note, one of my uh, college friends, Ray, wrote a note, he said, remember that they taught us in many of these ancient languages, there's no punctuation. So it takes a real, real, real deep understanding, not just of the language, but of the subject matter that you're trying to translate when it comes to these ancient languages so that we can come to a better understanding of what is, what the message is we're trying to convey. Uh, could someone read 1 Corinthians 14, 10, and 11 for us? And maybe let's get a little idea here. What, what do we draw from this? Anyone? Anybody? <laughs> Yeah, I'll read. Okay. Um, chapter 14, 10 to 11. Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meanings of what someone is saying, I'm a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner to me. Okay. Uh, how about verse 26, too? Okay. One second. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you has a hymn and a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. Okay. Thank you. Um, what do we learn from this? It says, oh, I'm sorry, I had something. Okay. Uh, it said there, we, we understand there are a lot of languages and everyone has its own meaning. So we need to have some way of understanding each other, either through interpretation or uh, through a fellowship and a, a brotherhood there. Okay, a gathering of the church body there. So we see we arise that there's the need again for interpretation, but at the same time, we can understand that everything has to be made worthwhile for a person. If they don't have a connection to the message, it's just uh, very unknown. My translation said barbarian. Uh, so someone who's not in in the connotation there is someone who's not in tune with what you're saying. Okay. Uh, any other any thoughts or comments on uh, Brother Ty? Yes. Um, this brings Revelation fourteen six okay. to a higher higher level for us. Not only that the gospel is for everyone, kindred, type, tongue, and people but that we're to bring the gospel mm -hmm. to where those people are and how those people are. Revelation 6, and then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, 
having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And that, that angel is, in a sense, who we are. We have this message to bring to the world, and we are to bring it in a, a method and a fashion that those people can understand, not just what, what is uh, common and understood by ourselves. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Uh, and again, that's, you know, the driving force of this lesson is why? Witnessing, all right? Um, let's go on to Tuesday's lesson then. And it says here, hey, okay, uh, my computer's frozen. <laughs> uh, that's not good. Uh, culture, right? I think my computer's frozen on the PowerPoint. So I'll just go from here. Can, uh, I, can I say something, Ty? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, my understanding is uh, poor translation come from poor interpretation. Okay. If you cannot interpret something, you cannot translate properly. And I, I think one of the reasons uh, we don't translate thing, things properly is because we have this, what you call free, free uh, supposition. You know, if you don't come to the Bible and accept it as the absolute truth, then you want to challenge it intellectually. You challenge the Bible. Once you start challenging the Bible, you became the interpreter, mm -hmm. not the Bible. Okay. Actually, the Bible should interpret itself. Mm -hmm. so, so if you have a, a, a presupposition that is not the absolute truth and you, you, you think you are the, the absolute truth, then you challenge. And if you don't, you don't interpret the Bible properly, uh, translation is no use. So, so I think translation is, uh, interpretation is very important for translation, but the interpre interpretation comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay. If you and I try to translate ourselves, the Bible should be allowed to translate, uh, interpret itself. And I think what we learned last week, yes? Anyone else? Okay, my screen's frozen. I don't know what's going on, but uh, we'll go on to uh, Tuesday's lesson. It says the Bible and culture. Uh, someone could read for us uh, back in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 34 and 35. Uh, First Corinthians 14, 34 and 35. If not, I'll just read it. I'm here. Okay. It says here, the women are to keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but are to subject, subject themselves, just as the law also says. If they desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in church. Uh, so, again, we look at this, it's in the Bible, right? But we need to interpret that. Do, do we believe that women should be silent in church and not permitted to speak? No, obviously not. Um, we look back uh, at Corinth. Yeah. Can I uh, uh, explain the context of this verse? Sure. Actually, during the time of, uh, the, the time of Paul, in the worship in the synagogue, all the, the men sits in the, in, the, in the ground floor of the synagogue, the important people, and all the women sit up in the balcony. And women has no rights, no education. So Paul tell, tell these women, stop asking questions and interrupting the, the men. You should not speak. If you want to ask questions, go home and ask your husband. Mm -hmm. The context is that it's about worship in the synagogue. It's not about women in general not allowed to speak in church. I mm -hmm. think a lot of people misunderstood this context. Okay. Uh, I also 
I remember this from when I was at San Gabriel and our Bible <laughs> teacher told, and we studied this back a few years ago. The city of Corinth itself is a seaport town. And back in those days, it's, uh, you know, the stereotypical seaport town and the women there are uh, whatever. <laughs> okay, and he, he pointed out, he said, the only thing that people remember from this Bible class is Corinthian girls. And it was kind of funny. Uh, at that time, we had the, 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 the time of the year that we studied this was the same time that the Sports Illustrated has their swimsuit issue. And so one of the, my classmates, he brought that, he gave to our Bible to you. Hey, Corinthian girls. So in that cultural context, we, we understand how some women were in terms of the city of Corinth. So again, we see a need here to interpret this based on the culture and the time of the message uh, and the place also. Not so much as this is a this is a biblical principle that we should still apply today. I think we begin to understand that. Okay. Uh, the I just, I, I, this is Marilyn, I just have a comment, but I agree. I think that uh, that is so important, but we all know that there are many times that people will use biblical verses in support of whatever belief they have. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's hard because, um, we're all human. We have different opinions, perspectives, and viewpoints. And so we can interpret things differently. It, is, it really behooves us to follow the principles of prayerful humility in studying the Bible and um, praying for God's Holy Spirit to lead our interpretation. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, the author gives us Paul on Mars Hill in Acts 17, uh, specific emphasis on verses 16 to 32. I specifically wanted to emphasize verses 28 to 31 on that. Um, and I'll just read it since I can't bring it up uh, for you guys to get ahead of me. Uh, Paul's talking to the Greeks here, the Athenians, uh, and he says, he's talking about Christ, and he says, for in him we live and move and exist, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are also his children, God's children. Being then the children of God, we ought not to think that the divine natures like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and thought of man. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all people everywhere should repent because he has fixed the day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. Um, two points that this passage gave to me. Uh, number one is... In terms of culture, uh, a lot of the Greeks at the end scoffed at him, but some said, hey, I want to talk to you more about this uh, when they talked to Paul. In Greek, Greek and Roman mythology, there's no resurrection. The, the great heroes that they have are put in the stars as constellations. You can see them today, Perseus, Hercules, uh, even Pegasus, the winged horse. So those are put in as constellations. So this idea is foreign to them of being resurrected in a physical body. Uh, the other one is pointed out, even though we're talking about this, Paul is talking about our relationship with God. And as um, the student pastor Ivan pointed out earlier, the message is important. The truthful message that we're trying to get out through all this still has to take precedence. There has to be the most important thing that we're talking about, especially when we talk about witnessing uh, and trying to bridge these different cultural gaps. If we focus on the truth 
and the message and the true understanding of this, we are given the promise that Christ will help us. Any thoughts on that? Anyone? Okay. All right. If not, we'll go on. Um, I'm running a little over, so I'll kind of go with this. Uh, last kind of thing I want to talk about is uh, we talk about spiritual blindness and not putting our own thoughts into this. What is the, uh, it says here, our sinful and fallen nature on Wednesday's lesson? Maybe we'll go with here. Uh, John 9, chapter. John 9, 39 to 41. Can someone read that? And can someone go ahead to John 12, 42 and 43? John 9, 39 to 41? Yes. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. Okay. Uh, what's the lesson here? What is spiritual blindness? Is anyone? <laughs> Or what's the, what's the warning that, that Christ is giving us? I think for the Pharisees, they prefer not to see. They chose not to see. It's not that they don't see. Mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of look at it as... Uh, your focus. What what is you? What are you focusing on? Uh, and that takes us to John twelve, verses forty two to forty three. Uh, I'll just read this since I'm here. Nevertheless, many even of the rulers believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him, for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the approval of men rather than the approval of God. So that tells us now not just our focus spiritually, but also what our motivations are, what we are trying to do, what our pursuits are in this world. Our pursuits then are not God's will, but it's uplifting ourselves instead of uplifting God. And our author here says instead we need to approach the bible in faith and submission and not with this attitude of criticism and doubt pride self-deception and doubt lead an attitude of distance towards god in the bible that will surely lead to disobedience that is an unwillingness to follow god's revealed will and from there we go back to what we talked about earlier it's our own presuppositions and our own understanding our own desires instead of looking at what the bible really says okay uh, lastly as we wrap this up i want to leave or turn to a couple of texts uh, the one that really stood out to me was second peter 3, 15, and 16. 2 Peter 3, 15, and 16. Uh, can someone read that for us? I'll jump ahead to one. Three, fifteen and 16? Yes. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to us, as also in all his epistles, 
speaking in them of these things in which are something hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Okay. Um, it says here, it's hard. Okay. Uh, these things are not easy to understand. So what's the lesson for us? Okay. Yeah, uh, well, since I'm frozen, uh, I just wrote here, you know, it's hard, so that requires us to study. We really need to study the Word of God. We really need to invest the time and the effort, and also we need to, going back to what we said earlier, we need to listen for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, we need that extra help. And we need to cross-reference, and as we said last week, in last week's lesson, allow the Bible to open up and interpret itself. And the last thing I wanted to leave us with uh, is John 14, verse 26. And it's the way that the promise of Jesus. And he says, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So here Jesus promises to send the Holy Spirit to us, not just to teach us, but to help us remember these teachings. Uh, and so we get the we promise there that not only can we learn by listening for the Holy Spirit, but also we can remember and use these as our tools for witnessing. Okay. Uh, any last thoughts, comments, questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, I apologize for uh, my computer freezing, and I'll turn the time back over to Pastor Pablo.